Well, in today's edition of Oh Yeah, I'll Have That Done, this whole pile is an old bridge that was basically out at the front of the property. It looks like they just pushed it all into one big pile probably when they redid that bridge a long time ago. And I told my irrigation people that, oh yeah, I'll have that done before you guys get here. Well, today they're supposed to be here. And of course it's not done because that's about how my life's going right now. Too many things going on. I'm attempting to move some of these beams out of here with the skid steer and I don't have a grapple bucket right now, so I'm just chaining things up. So right over in here will be where this line needs to go through, so I've got to get at least quite a few of these beams out of here. This stuff right here is the bane of my existence and in terms of any open ground that it can find, it will come through survives the winter because it's actually a winter annual I'm pretty sure and uh, so I'm not going to be too upset when I bring the skid steer right through here in a moment and tear this all up. I bet that's still not going to kill this stuff and also I missed a spot. Dang it. The crew wasted no time in beginning to work on the new front yard. They located the septic pipes and measured for placement of the sprinkler heads. 25 and, and 12, so 37. Yep. We then moved to the plot area to figure out placement there as well. So this is a zone here, and the, the color of flags don't mean anything, it's all I have. Okay. So there's six spray heads here. It's six, 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 six. Okay. And he wants, he, we gotta cut, we gotta make sure everything's straight and square. But five, what, five inches, Ryan? Yeah. Five inches outside the grass is where he wants the heads. Okay. On, on all the ones that are dirt, like this. Okay. So these feeders, we're gonna take that way. See the, the green and yellow flag? I wanna set a valve, a valve, valve there. One, two, three, four, five. I think there's five valves in that box. Three of them are from right here. So up here, this grass isn't as, you know, it's a little easier, we can plow up there. Well, the wind is starting up again, but that's normal. It's just about April here in Iowa. We're getting started on the irrigation here. This is gonna be a pretty massive project because I'm doing a whole bunch of zones and all that fun stuff down on the plot so that I have a lot of control over everything, but it's gonna be uh, definitely when you look at all these flags that they put in for heads and all the valves and all that stuff, it is quite a project. So that is why some of you have said, oh, you should have put in your irrigation by yourself and all that. And as we started off this video to let you know about how much time I have right now, pretty much not gonna happen by myself. So I had to call in some reinforcements here and these guys have really helped me figure out everything too and get it all mapped out correctly. It doesn't take long with the right equipment and experienced crew to make great progress. The plot area is where most of the work was gonna be done. The stormy weather we've been having lately cut a few work days short, but it wasn't long before it was time for the main line to be put in. That main line needed to be connected to the well, so the next day work began on digging that up to make that connection. Yeah. 
Once all the connections were made, the sprinkler heads were placed in the ground and all the valves connected, it was time to put in the controller and to start testing. So I got a brand new irrigation system installed here over the last week and just a couple days. So I know many of you have been interested to see how this was all gonna be set up. So today I thought I'd just go through that system and show you how things ended up. So let's get started. First off, I wanna say this is a Rainbird system. I wanna thank Rainbird as well for donating some of the material for it. They were gracious enough to provide me with some of that. I'd also like to thank Meston Irrigation here. They have helped me design this system. Mike there has done a fantastic job to help me get all of this figured out and mapped out and everything and then their guys did a really good job doing this work as well I've been very happy with everything so definitely if you're in the Des Moines area go ahead and check those guys out so all of these flags that you see out here are heads and we ended up with 25 zones yes you heard that correctly 25 zones I know that is a lot but I wanted to split this up as much as possible to have as much control as possible over every single little area that I've created with plots and I wasn't really thinking about this necessarily when I was putting the plots in how much it would require if I was ever going to put in the in-ground irrigation but here we are so ended up with 25 zones and I'll explain sort of how that works. So I guess we'll start right here at the well when we first moved out here or purchased this property we were told that there was maybe rural water out here which is essentially just a city water source that's brought out throughout the rural areas. So we were told though that it was across the road somewhere so to bring it underneath there over to our property and hook up that was probably going to be pretty expensive but we actually found out that over here in the front section of the property there was already the main line for that rural water so we had put in this well thinking that this is probably going to be the main water source for our house but it didn't end up being that way because the rural water source was there and we decided to go with that because hookup really wasn't too bad so that left our well for irrigation purposes or as a backup system this is only about 35 feet down and if you saw my video when we had this installed this is more of a well that was just dug down until they got to rock and they didn't go any farther than that we already had pretty good water at that point this is an eight inch casing so somewhere around 20 gallons to per minute probably on the best side is what this well is producing now I would have loved to have more water than that if I could but you just never know what you're gonna get with that so down here though this has been good enough for me last year to do all of my watering of the plots and I was hoping to be able to utilize this well for the same thing this year once the irrigation went in then also see if I could get it all the way up to the house and use it for that too now what that really means irrigation wise is that we had to size down these zones so that we can run less sprinkler heads off of them just so that we're not overtaxing the well so you'll see up on the front yard when we get to that point that we had to do a lot more zones to cover that area just to make sure that we're not overtaxing the well and I'll also explain up there that we have the backup system that we can use the rural water up there too just in case that the well doesn't end up working out for some reason these things you just never know until you get into them and use them for a while so the other thing is I do not have a pressure tank on this well yet so that means that right now I'm just manually turning it on and off the pump that is down there with the power that is in right over here so that means that once I get a pressure tank and all of that then I will be able to run this system wirelessly off of a device which will be super nice but right now I have to manually turn on the pump right there so basically the way I split this up was just every single little plot that I already have has its own zone here so these six main areas they all have heads here where you see these flags so there's three heads on this side for this one three heads on this side so you're going to get even coverage over this whole thing really the same goes for these smaller plots I wasn't sure if I was going to try to do some larger zones with those but I ended up going with putting in heads on each one of these corners and they're just spraying this way since these are really really small plots these are all going to be individually controlled as well exact same situation on the low cut plots wanted each of these to be able to be controlled individually just depending on what we find out needs more or less water as we go but they're probably going to be fairly consistent but having individual control again is going to be the best case scenario so here on this tall fescue plot that's larger i just went with rotors here and i'll explain these are the exact same rotors uh, up on the front yard too same exact thing on this ryegrass larger plot it's got rotors in it then over here this is the drought testing that I'll be doing so these do not have individuals on these right at this moment I decided since I'm mostly just gonna be letting this all dry out that if it ever does need water I can 
consistently put it across all of these. But really the point of this over here is to let it be natural, just whatever rainfall we get. Got a couple more zones over here for testing yet that has yet to be figured out exactly what's going there. Kentucky bluegrass testing plot right here. It's a much larger area right in this big square. And then of course I've removed that old bridge that was all in that section. I worked the soil a little bit and that is all going to be one perennial ryegrass zone right there. One of the other things that I think is going to be really nice to have are these quick couplers which I never had at our old place. This is connected into the irrigation system. You just have a, a little key that goes into here. You turn that on and lots of golf courses and sports fields have these. Then you can hook up a garden hose right to that or there's different connections. And that way if I want to spray something off down here in this area or I want to hand water something, I have a connection point right here right into the irrigation and I don't have to go find a spigot or anything or a faucet of any kind, it's just connected right there. So the other thing that I mentioned is that all this will be able to be controlled down here by an app eventually. If I wanna look at a zone and turn something on, I can do that from my phone. We ended up running a two inch main line from the well. So that thing goes all the way up to the west side of the building. The other thing that's changed up here from my old system is that I went with rotors on all of this front yard. The reason being is that I liked my other sprinkler heads that were a little slower, but because we have so many zones to cover, if you think about it, if you have a really low precipitation rate on those actual heads that you have in there, and it takes you a half an hour or more to put down even a decent amount of water just because of how slow they are, I needed something that was a little faster or I'll just never get through these zones. Also, I found myself last year when I was doing a lot of watering using more of the impact sprinklers to get down a decent amount of water in a faster method than I was using those slower heads that I used to have. All right, so this right here is where I can make the switch over from using well water or rural water, just depending on what I want. So this main line comes right through here and then goes back into the building over there. Right here I have a ball valve. Right now it's in the closed position. So anything from this main line coming this way from the well stops right here. And then coming from this direction right now is rural water. That was connected to the building obviously, so we have the rural water source in the building. We just tapped off of that line. That comes down into here and also, as I said, can go all the way down the line, so I could bring rural water all the way down to the plots as well. But right now, since I'm stopping it here, the rural water is just going on to the front yard zones, doesn't go any farther. And then if I wanted the well water to come up to here and do these zones, then I would open up this, would close the backflow over there on the building, turn off the water line there so that there's no rural water coming back out this way. It's a nice system to have those two options and it's really all because of just a couple of valves that change the direction of where things are going. Now I am in the mechanical room and you can see this is the IVM controller. There's a lot of different functionality to this that I'm going to be trying to learn over time. The unfortunate part that I learned day one is that they do not have an Android app yet. And so I'm gonna have to figure out an iOS device because although I have all Macs for everything, I do not have an iPhone. But the nice thing really about this that I love off the bat is that you only need one wire to run down there to all those other zones and it connects. I think this controller that I have can connect up to 60 zones on this thing with just the wire. You don't need to run separate wire to every single one. Such a nice feature for that. Haven't even touched the surface here really learning this thing yet but I'll get more into that as we go, I'm sure. So that's a look at the new system. There's gonna be plenty more this season, I'm sure, as I dig into this thing and start using it. So stay tuned for all that. Stay tuned for this front yard being planted really soon as well. Thank you so much for watching today. We'll see you next time.